to English because we have a completely English speaker morning. I'm looking forward to the day today. Our first speaker is Professor Edsker W. Dijkstra. I think you all know him for his contributions, and it's not possible to mention all his contributions in 10 sentences, so I rather keep it short. Structured programming is certainly one thing for the software engineers, which is most important, but for people working in science, like myself, it's also important to mention his contribution to Algol in the early days, to recursion and implementation of recursion. Semaphores were already mentioned. Also, his work on operating systems. And then later, he became very interested in structured programming, also using techniques from logics, very famous weakest predicate transformers, and lots of work stimulated by that. So it's a big pleasure for us to have Edsker here. Edsker, please. Zero, one, two. If this had been a real test, I would have started one, two, three. Okay, it worked. <laughs> I hope all of you slept well. <laughs> the um, the Mark Oberdorf summer schools, uh, at an early stage, I was asked, uh, when I would like to lecture, and I said, well, early in the school. Instead, they gave me the 9 o'clock slot each day. Um, uh, particularly the second week on Friday morning, that was after the farewell gala dinner. That particular lecture was nicknamed the victory of mind over matter. <laughs> Well, here we go. Uh, this is not the title of my lecture. Uh, the title of the lecture is What Led to Notes on Structured Programming. Uh, all the slides you will see are SDNM's own version. Uh, okay. Did I press twice? Yes. Yes. Uh, let's go through the history quickly. Uh, I was introduced to programming in uh, 1951 in a summer school given in Cambridge by Morris Wilkes, David Wheeler, and Stan Gill, and became a part time, on a part time basis, initially two days per week, the programmer of the Mathematical Center in Amsterdam. And the rest of the week, I was supposed to study theoretical physics. Now, my only model for programming was the programming organization as developed in um, Cambridge for the EdSec. I followed it closely when designing the program notation, input, output, and library organization for the machines that were being built at the Mathematical Center. That was the ARA first, and then the FERTA, then the ARMAC, and finally the X1. Uh, they would all follow the same pattern that I had learned uh, in Cambridge. I clearly was a conservative programmer. Uh, yes. Uh, when I joined the Mathematical Center in the spring of 1952, I was invited to do so by uh, Aad van Wijngaarden, who then became my boss. Uh, Bram Loopstra and Karel Scholten, I just mentioned them because they are the people with whom I cooperated most closely. Uh, I told you that I was studying theoretical physics and was, therefore was programming. Scholten and Loopstra, they studied 
uh, experimental physics, and they built the machines. Um, Uh, the next important moment in, the, is in, in my life was in 1955 when I decided to become a programmer. And I took that decision because I had concluded that of theoretical physics and programming, programming embodied the greater intellectual challenge. It's true, I, it's true, I did so. You see, in those days I did not suffer from intellectual modesty. But, but it was a difficult decision, for I had been groomed as first-class scientist, and becoming a programmer looked like a farewell from science. When I explained to Van Wijngaarden my dilemma, he told me that computers were here to stay, and that in the world of programming, I could very well be one of the purpose persons called to create the science that was still lacking. Getting my degree in physics in Leiden became a formality to be done with as quickly as possible. 